Hello everyone, this is Steve Barton. Today we want to discuss how to modify your uh, jaws on your lathe chop. I've been uh, watching one of our subscribers, uh, Randy Richards. I've subscribed to his channel as well. He's got some uh, very interesting material there. I strongly encourage you to check him out. But anyways, uh, he's got a closing uh, lathe that he's been doing a lot of work uh, and fixing up and doing some interesting things to him. One of the videos I was watching, uh, I noticed he had uh, older buck chuck, 10-inch. Uh, uh, it was a six-jaw chuck. And so I started conversation with them, let them know that in the past I've modified uh, the jaws on those chucks so that you can uh, hold smaller diameters uh, as they come uh, from the company. About five eighths of, is about the smallest diameter that you can uh, hold on with all six jaws in. And if you take three uh, uh, every other jaws out, uh, you can get smaller. But I can't remember. I think maybe just slightly under a half inch. Now the modifications I'm going to show you today, uh, with all six jaws in, you'll be able to go down to just a little below 375 thousandths, so three eighths, uh, with all six jaws in. And if you pull every other jaw out, and so that you end up with a three jaw chuck, uh, you'll be able to go down to, if I remember correctly, about an eighth inch diameter. And before we get started in that, uh, we may have some white balance issues, I'm not sure, in the camera. Uh, there's some new things that are going on. Uh, uh, some of the lights in the other room, uh, the ballast were going out. We're running uh, eight foot fluorescent fixtures using T12 bulbs. And instead of buying more ballast, I know they're all going to start going out. The bulbs are starting to go out. So I thought, well, maybe I'll check into some LED lighting uh, and see if that would be a better option. And so I checked around the area a little bit. All they sold in this area at some of the uh, different electrical supply stores is four footers. They told me they don't make the eight uh, foot uh, in T12. They don't make them. Uh, but I found on the internet, I think the company's name is uh, E-Led. Uh, I found uh, they make the T12s in eight foot. And uh, uh, we had to buy ten at a time, which is fine because we got five eight foot fixtures or uh, yeah, five eight foot fixtures in the other room. And so by buying ten bulbs. Uh, we can uh, cover all the uh, lights. Now, the problem we're having in this room, we're still running fluorescent lights, and uh, so when we installed the uh, LED lights, we noticed that it was much brighter. In fact, I thought I was going to have to wear some sunscreen and put my sunglasses on. Uh, it's quite bright. Uh, you come in this room, we're running just regular fluorescence uh, in this room, and so uh, we may have a little bit difficulty with uh, uh, color balance or the white balance. But anyways, if you're interested in those lights, I'll put a link down in the comment section over there. You can check out the website because I think that's the way to go in the future. Uh, I was really impressed with the quality of those light bulbs. Uh, I was really impressed with how much brighter they were. And I, I bought the dimmest. There's three different brightness, and I bought the dimmer ones, and they were actually a lot brighter uh, than the fluorescents. I was reading some of the comment sections, and some of the guys, uh, because the... Uh, uh, what they would do is uh, these uh, double bulb light fixtures with the LED lights, the way they're wired in, uh, you can uh, put just one bulb in there. And if you use the brighter ones, instead of having two bulbs, you can have one bulb in there and still be brighter than two fluorescent bulbs. So they're pretty neat uh, project we had. Uh, and, uh, eventually we'll end up having the LEDs in this room as well. But anyhow, let's get back to... Uh, uh, the project as far as modifying the uh, jaws on the lathe and seeing that I do not have a 10 inch chuck right here uh, I just drew up in uh, Fusion 360 I, I just drew some lathe jaws uh, and I'll show you how I modified these so we'll switch over here to the screen and so you can see what's going on basically I got a single jaw sitting right here you can see it's spinning around So there's the jaw, and what you have to do, you have to cut material off of both of these sides on this angle. Uh, let me uh, just move this forward a little bit. There's all six jaws, and you can see with six jaws that are in there, 
This is a 5 eighths diameter hole that I have drawn in there and what will happen is that uh, when these jaws close together they will hit uh, the sides and you cannot collapse any further. So as uh, uh, Chuck when you get it and, and um, let me make another point uh, these jaws are the solid jaws, they're not the two-piece jaws, these are solid jaws. But when you get it, uh, you'll have about a 5 eighths diameter, is roughly about the smallest that you're going to get with all six jaws in. But if you cut material out of these areas, it'll allow the uh, uh, jaws to collapse even further. And, let's see... So here's showing the modification on one jaw. Well, we removed enough material, and as you remove that material, it will allow this jaw to go in deeper. The radius over here remaining the same, but I can move the jaw in deeper. Uh, if you do this with all the jaws, you can see the uh, by eliminating that material on the sides of the jaws, uh, you can allow that to go much deeper. And so I have drawn up over here this jaw has the material removed and here you have all six jaws in there and as you can see we have a much smaller hole that hole is actually drawn at a 350 thousandths diameter so that's with six jaws in and if you uh, remove three of the jaws every other jaws it'll allow you to go down again I believe if my memory served me right about to 125 thousandths so that's one of the modifications you can make. Uh, when you do this, what I've done, I made a little fixture that uh, just sets up at 30 degrees, a little plate where I can put stops up and I can clamp these jaws in and you can go either to the surface grinder or you can use some carbide tooling and a uh, uh, like a uh, shell cutter uh, whatever and uh, you can cut this material off. Now most of those jaws are case hardened. There's going to be a little hardness on the case and you get through that and it's going to be soft. So it's going to be a little hard on the cutters. Uh, but it's a faster way to remove the material than grinding. Uh, what I normally do is I'll, I'll, I'll take them to the mill in that fixture that I've made and I'll remove most of the material and then I'll just clean them up so they look nice on the surface grinder. By using that fixture and having stops set up uh, so that the stops uh, uh, will hit maybe on, on one of these uh, uh, back part of the jaws. By having that set up I can make them nice and even. Uh, but what will happen is uh, if you get to the point where you uh, cut these, let me back up just a little bit. I believe the distance uh, from this point to that point is a uh, hundred and seventy five thousandths. So that, that's a, if, if you, you cut those down to about that dimension, you'll be able to go down to about a 350 diameter. One of the other modifications that I make on these jaws is I put hardened inserts in there. And I will just bring that up. I have that drawn over here. So here you get your jaw. Here you got an insert. Uh, these jaws are case hardened and if you uh, bore your jaws out or grind them out, however you do, uh, too much you're going to end up with soft material. Uh, but by putting these hardened inserts, I'll, I'll make uh, this piece right here, I'll make this piece out of a CPM 3V and uh, heat treat it to about a, a 5860 Rockwell. And if you have a wire burner, it actually works really nice because with a wire burner, you can actually uh, wire burn this entire shape all in one shot, and you won't even have to mill the 30 degree angles there on the sides. Uh, and then if you have a wire burner, you can uh, take uh, and make your uh, inserts, uh, make a block with a number of star holes, and you can cut as many of those inserts out as, as needed. Uh, when you do do the inserts uh, and you do the slot, if you make it as close to a one-to-one -one size, and so it's going to make it a light uh, press fit as you go in, uh, that will uh, hold them in. And as the lathe spins, the centrifugal force is always pushing outward, 
so you don't have to worry about them flying out. And what I'll do, uh, I will drill an eighth inch hole in the bottom of the insert over here. And once I got this insert fitted in uh, to the block here, I'll transfer that hole and then I'll just use a spring pin to go in there. And that will keep the jaws from wanting to move in and out this way if there's any movement. But I think uh, what would be a better option is if you just apply Loctite, some red Loctite, to this surface, this surface, and put them in there, uh, I think you'll find out you have better results. So once you put these inserts in there, and you want to have the insert coming out a little bit longer, sticking out a little longer uh, than the pocket, because you're going to want to uh, true the jaws up. And I know a lot of people will use the tool post grinder, Maybe in a later video I'll show you what I do. It's something that's unique, uh, but I'll end up using a, a, a carbide boring bar and using some uh, Sumitomo CBN inserts. Uh, they're BNC 350. They handle interrupted cut real nice, and uh, that works a whole lot nicer than using uh, a tool pulse grinder. Uh, I hate using anything that causes and leaves grit on uh, the lathe. It's not designed to handle that. If the grit gets in your coolant and it keeps circulating around, uh, I've seen a lot of lays uh, get ruined because people like to use sandpaper, uh, stones. Uh, and in fact, in some of the older shops I worked where they used a lot of the tool pulse grinders, them lays never lasted uh, very long. Uh, you always had individuals that wouldn't do a thorough cleaning job on them. And even if you do a thorough cleaning job on them, well, sometimes you're going to end up getting that grit in places you don't want it in. So if you use a, a CB insert with a carbide boring bar and bore that out, you don't have to worry about that. So anyhow, uh, this is just a, a, a short little uh, video that we decided to do to show you some of the modifications that you can make. Now if you happen to buy a chuck and you got the two-piece uh, uh, jaws, uh, what you can do is on that top jaw, buy you some soft jaws. They're a lot cheaper than the hardened steel jaws. And then you can actually put them hardened inserts in there too. And what's nice about that, because them, uh, the softer coal roll uh, soft jaws that you can buy, they're, they're not that expensive. And so you can do some unique combinations uh, with them soft jaws. Uh, if you've got punches with heads on them, uh, you can actually relieve the back of some of them soft jaws, put the punch head back, clamp on the diameter, and we've done that a number of times too. So uh, if you have a two-piece jaw set, you can still do this. Uh, it just might be a little more tricky. Well, that'll be it for today. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.